Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very a very great day to everyone. Today I'm back with my continual podcast for our course social and cultural studies. So we will continue with uh, today's topic or today's part which is topic number 6 geographical scope of the Malays. So this one the slide uh, has been already given so you can refer this slide so on this topic we will discuss on the malay world when we talk about the malay world we mean the bigger community the community background and the culture of the nusantara and or inside malaysia specifically so what is actually nusantara so we can see there's uh, several definitions of nusantara Nusantara is also known as the Malay world, the Malay kingdom, and uh, several more definitions. So the historic background of the Malay world that we would like to discuss is that the first one, as you can see from the slide itself in the screen, so the world of the Malay culture covers the culture of the communities from the north, east, south, and west. So it's actually a big map. It's not, uh, the Malay world is not uh, the map that we understand like the Malaysian map, like right now. Like, as for example, there's uh, Peninsula Malaysia, the Eastern Malaysia, and the Western part of Malaysia. It does not happen like that, like that uh, in the previous, the previous, previous uh, centuries. So, there was a bigger map rather than a smaller one that you see like we know today in Malaysia. So the bigger map compromise of uh, several regions, uh, several countries which are known today uh, and it compromise of a bigger and a larger kingdom of powers, of hegemony. So it compromises of the northern part of the kingdom of the world of the Malay world, the eastern, uh, the southern, and the western. So usually, normally, the northern part is uh, something across or somewhere across the area of uh, Indochina. Uh, so that's the the I mean the the northern part. Usually now some places, some countries you can see, uh, including some area of the Indo Chinese Indochina. Uh, which are now as Cambodian, uh, Vietnam, uh, and certain parts of the Indochina. Then uh, from the eastern side is some of the, there's a map you can see from the slide, some of the islands of the Hainan Islands, the Chinese islands, and also some of the Philippine islands. The southern part is top down until the Cocos Island or the Christmas Island. Uh, this is like the tip island uh, at Australia, on top of Australia. Then the western stretches much more farther and making it much more a bigger world, which is uh, uh, the thousands of islands. Uh, I mean, the eastern is the Madagascar, or the western is the Madagascar island, uh, as well as Suriname, South Africa, and in the west. So it's a big map, and uh, when in the kingdom, Malacca kingdom, the kingdom of Malacca, uh, Malay language one or was one of the lingua franca, the one of the language that was being used at the mean as a medium of communication. So you can see from the from the slide, and here if you look back uh, from the geographical scope, it actually defines uh, much more detail. Uh, as for example, the northern part of the Indochina is where the Malay Champa, the people. So for the exam for the for the test assessment or the assignment, you for this topic you just have to understand and navigate the map area. Which one is north, which one is east, which one is south and which one is the western part. Okay. So the southern region is Cocos Island and Christmas Island. Uh, you can see from the slide there's uh, several pictures. Uh, so example for the Cocos Island and Christmas Island. The material culture and the non-material culture can be related with uh, some of the Malay culture existing in Malaysia itself. For so example, uh, the clothes they wear, the ritual, the religion they use, uh, and more. Okay. 
Uh, after that, uh, the western part is Suriname near Rio de Janeiro and Madagascar Island. And uh, the, the eastern part is the China Sea, South China Island and also the Philippine Island. So the, there's, the Nusantara was also known as the Malay Archipelago, Archipelago or the Malay world. And there are several definitions been given towards the Malay. As example by Professor Van der Toe in the slide says that Malay means someone who crosses the Indonesian language. This means people who have no belief or religion, pagan people, believe in animism and has gone to a transi tran transition from animism, Hinduism and Buddhism to Islam. The orang-orang yang travel, uh, maksudnya apa Professor ni bagi tahu. Uh, vendor tu bagi tahu orang Malay ni orang yang uh, dalam area yang map yang kita bagi tahu tu yang dalam Malay world tu dia lah mereka yang cross apa yang dalam map tu yang cross yang cross ke tak cross ke I mean in between the whole map adalah orang Malay dia orang telah uh, gone through a transition of religion uh, daripada kepercayaan yang berbeza-beza Anismia, Hinduism, pada Buddhism dan last sekali uh, Islam lah in several countries and JJ the Hollander bagi tahu uh, mereka adalah orang-orang daripada perkataan Sumatera Minang language which is layo or traveler or voyager ataupun run out they are known for their voyages and travels tak kenal dengan ilmu laut dia lah panglima awang dan sebagainya okey dan juga berwesa Alma Amusin bagi tahu uh, mereka juga adalah orang-orang uh, muhalai dia berkata muhalai which means ulama atau teacher Ni adalah teori-teori kedatangan Islam ke tanah Melayu daripada tiga lah, Chinese, Arab dan juga Indian. Uh, basically, all daripada Arab lah. So, mereka come untuk preach, untuk sampaikan agama Islam uh, dalam slide tu lah. Okay, dan uh, beberapa lah kajian-kajian dia. Okay, kalau kita tengok sini, historical formation of Nusantara community. So, uh, dekat sini telah diterangkan oleh scholars contohnya Profesor Taib Osman Mat Taib Osman dan Mubin Shepherd believe that Nusantara has had its occupants since its prehistoric age zaman prehistoric ni zaman prasejarah dan zaman tak ada rekod bertulis within thousands of years the population has increased and formed a national identity national identity contohnya like Malaysia language and culture so uh, one of the theory yang dipanggil pakai adalah the travel wave theory von hein gelden theory iaitu teori ni mengatakan bahawa uh, orang Malay ni daripada uh, area-area kebanyakannya daripada area-area Yunnan China so ni satu teori lah uh, teori ni iaitu mengatakan uh, dari teori ni dia mengatakan uh, bahawa kenapa mereka lari kerana ada serangan-serangan daripada outsider orang Gaza dan sebagainya dan ada beberapa wave of economic problem, uh, natural disaster dan sebagainya. So mereka telah lari dari China tu, dia turun ke bawah, ke bawah, ke bawah, Yunnan tu ke bawah dan menjadi beberapa jenis keturunan Malay iaitu Proto dengan Duitro Malay. So dikatakan Proto Malay adalah mereka yang memang asalnya menetap dekat area map Nusantara tu dan Duitro ni orang yang, uh, yang datang lah dan yang berkahwin. So, menjadikan uh, second dan third uh, sampailah fourth generation. Second generation lah yang duetro, yang datang nak kahwin. Third dan sebagainya lah mereka yang kahwin antara region yang berbeza dalam Malay world tu. Dan uh, fourth punya adalah antara region yang Asia tu dengan non-Asian lah, outside Asian, pan-Asian. Okay. So, uh, dan lagi satu teori lah, teori yang lebih baru lagi by Profesor Debra UPM iaitu Benua Sunda yang tu mengatakan yang sebenarnya orang Malay ni memang dia tak ada pun datang dari China dia sebenarnya datang daripada Benua Sunda itself, daripada Nusantara itself tapi Benua tu asalnya satu yang besar tapi lama-lama telah ditenggelami air dan mempecahkan Benua tu seolah macam dia ada region-region tertentu Okay, so itu antara dua teori lah dan ada beberapa teori. So kita pakai for this one as the first one is the wave theory, the second is theory Benua Sunda. That one you boleh read more, boleh refer lagi dekat online dan sebagainya. But I think that's all untuk this topic, untuk assessments by just understand and try to navigate mana north, east, south, west dan farm dia punya orders. Okay, so Assalamualaikum, take care.